Well, welcome Matthew Allison to our Teacher Spotlight interview series. Um, you have the Allison Flute Studio in the um, St. Louis uh, metropolitan area, and you also own practiceflute.com. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got started in flute and teaching, uh, and we'll go from there. Great, thanks, and thank you for having me here today with you all. Um, flute was actually really random. I wanted to join band because my brother was in band, and um, he played clarinet. And my parents wouldn't let me play the same instrument as he, fearing competition. So flute was sort of chosen for me. I wish I had a more glamorous story of why I play the flute than that. Um, but it, you know, obviously it stuck. So the um, friendships I built in band really helped me love flute. Um, and then using it as kind of a tool to learn to communicate some expression that didn't happen naturally for me um, as a kid just it felt pretty to play it felt good to play um and it really has that singing sound that i that i just really grew to to love to incorporate as as part of my own voice i guess i've actually been teaching for a long time i started teaching when i was in high school um there was a in my community something called the school for creative arts was being started by a friend's mom and I was interested in it and she said would you be interested in teaching beginning flute lessons and I said well I'm not I'm not good enough for that and I, I went and had a conversation with my teacher my flute teacher I was taking private lessons and she said everybody has something that they can share and help with somebody else that that yes I think that you are good enough to help a beginner do better um and that was that was really powerful to me to get I guess that approval so I've been yeah. teaching flute to some extent since I was like 16. At the time, though, I would you know take all of my students music to my flute teacher and play it with her and she'd say how do you think you're going to approach this with your student and i'd give my ideas and she would then give me a few more ideas, but it was. Is really great kind of being the translator, I guess, between my teacher and my students, so mm -hmm. I, I learned to teach but. It almost felt like an apprenticeship at that at that young age. How did it evolve from there for you? Um, obviously, you went to school for music. Yes, um, and I thought I was going to be this huge performer. You know, you know, I I had the looking back, I'll call it ego, but the the young confidence of a small town Midwest boy. You know, like I'm really good for my school. Um, I'm gonna win every major orchestral audition ever, kind of a thing. Um, and not that I gave up on that in school, but while I was in, in college, I actually started teaching flute lessons more officially um, through the university's preparatory department. And um, I really enjoyed that. And then in grad school, I was a teaching assistant. So I just consistently taught for a long time. And my first job out of school was at a, at a school teaching music. So um, by then I'd already been doing it for a long time. I didn't realize that was the direction I was going to take. Um, I didn't take any like huge um, courses or any education specific classes necessarily, but um, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I learned and then talking to my teachers about how I would teach something to a student and from there it just became that it just developed on its own I guess naturally um, without the intention of being a, a flute studio teacher I didn't even realize that was an option for a career at the time <laughs> I was I was a student you know yeah I think a lot of us uh, myself included like was in a similar position where I thought like, okay, I'm gonna perform, I'm gonna go do auditions, I'm gonna win a great job, great. And then for me, it wasn't so much that I gave up on it either. It was just that I found other tracks that I thought, oh, I can also do this. This also sounds fun and interesting. It, it keeps me in music and flute without doing you know that specific performance thing, so. And I, they work so well together, but, but mine's just kind of shifted where the also is you know, I teach and I also perform mm -hmm. um, and I'm a pretty good performer. You know, I, I can play the flute all right, uh, <laughs> but I my heart has decided that um, teaching is is where my main focus um, should be. Awesome. Um, so how did practiceflute.com come about? That's a 
great like web address to own. Um, and so now that's that's you. So you you've got that. How did you come up with that and and start it? Um, so for a long time, for as long as I can remember, since I've been since I was in school, I've been interested in how and why we learn things, and I really enjoy breaking things down um, and take using a very methodical approach at first, where break it down into individual parts and then piece them back together productively. Um, but also just to get out of like patterns of normal behavior. So I started making video tutorials back in grad school. I think my first came out in 2006 or so. Mm -hmm. Long time um, before Practice Flute, which I've had for I think three or four years now. When I started Practice Flute, I was developing these practice books that took specific etudes and repertoire and broke them down into smaller chunks, things to practice, um, specific technique of it. Sort of like mini etudes for etudes or mini etudes for repertoire. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to other instrument teachers if they'd be interested in doing the same thing. My thought was that we would have like practice band or something along those lines, but um, all of the people with whom I was speaking, they were busy and you know, I wasn't able to offer any any money, you know, or anything like that. It was like, hey, do you want to put this out there and see if anybody buys it kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So I I guess I went off and just tried it on my own. And and it was just about, you know, how can we better practice the flute? How can we enjoy when we practice the flute? How can we um, find ourselves as a musician when we practice flute? And all of the all of the things that I was wanting to answer just kind of pointed back to practice flute. So fortunately, the the uh, web address was available because it does seem to really embody that which I love helping people do more efficiently um, and effectively, but also with less tension, more joy, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, all of that has to go in, into, into our practice room. Mm -hmm. And you have like a specific focus on making um, this material as accessible as possible. So it's not all free. You really focus on making it affordable for all levels, which is really great. Yeah, thanks. So there is on the website, there's a lot of material that's free. Mm -hmm. um, and the YouTube videos and video tutorials, obviously they're all free, but some of the bigger projects um, are very low cost. Um, I think the most expensive thing is like 10 or $12. Um, and that's for like a 70 page book kind of a thing. So it's um, it's all accessible. And the reason is that where I live geographically, I'm kind of nestled between a very affluent town, one of the best band programs in the country, and a very uh, a town that doesn't get very much support. Um, and there's a strong presence of minorities and low-income students in that. And I don't only want to serve the kids that can afford it kind of thing. The low cost is to make it so everybody hopefully can have some amount of access to additional materials and resources and part of the virtual presence too is you know i, I grew up kind of i'm a suburbs but like essentially in a cornfield and go a little bit further east from me you get further and further into the thick of or i guess the thin of cornfields really it's not like <laughs> into the plains of illinois and there's not a lot of flute teachers around and um, if music isn't a priority, even if the family could afford flute lessons or could afford materials, the parents might not be offering that support. So that was that even for those kids, I want them to be able to find the the free resources or the two or three or five dollar resources and, and be able to better justify it. So, yeah, so more more people have access to learning something. And I also want to caveat real quick, none of these by any means would replace working with a private flute teacher or um, are meant to diminish what, what we do for a living as well. They're meant to offer support. Yeah. And you also have some YouTube videos that correspond with the stuff that you've got printed or just really great videos of you playing pieces. Because I think of myself as like I grew up in a very rural area of uh, Eastern Oregon, and so I didn't have like a real flute teacher until I got to college. So I can think of like you know kids in the same situation now who can now watch 
your videos and there are other people who are doing this too, but yours specifically focus on some very standard pieces that I did not even learn because I didn't have a teacher. So this is really important and really great that it's accessible to people everywhere as well. Yeah, thank you. The YouTube station has just a giant menagerie of content, I guess, um, going from just how to play some of the standards of excellence or beginning band book stuff, going through counting and saying note names, singing note names and fingering um, with the hopes that more beginners could practice along with things like that, maybe before they found a private teacher. Um, some of my my materials have videos that go specifically with them, like the the vibrato workbook has videos that go through each of the exercises. Uh, and then there's just content too to hopefully be fun or inspiring in some way, some etudes, some um, contest pieces. Um, some of those contest pieces have a tutorial that goes with it, like accounting and note names, rhythms, um, little tricks and tips to get through some of those tricky fingerings. And some of them are just playing with the hope that like a kid might stumble across it and listen to it and enjoy it. And one of the things that I've done on that YouTube site too is almost all of the videos are recorded on a student or in intermediate level flute. Um, also, like part of my wanting to provide resources for students at less cost is also to maybe be a champion that you can enjoy playing music and do a good job of it, even if you don't have the fancy gold flute yet. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those videos, almost all of the videos on the site are recorded on something that more, more students could afford. So you also take donations on your website um, to help you create more content, which is great. So I just wanted to put a shout out there for people watching. If you want to see Matthew do more things, um, he does accept donations of any size, um, but it helps create more videos like this, which is really awesome. Was that a feature that you had initially or something you've put in more recently? It went on the website pretty early on. Uh, you know, as when we start something, Anytime we start something, we're probably doing it for free and 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 donating our time and our energy doing it, which is great. Musicians and especially teachers seem to do that more than than most people. And um, I love I would love to donate everything, but you know when when there's only so much time, it's it's nice to to have a little bit of support. Um, so my unofficial rule i guess is for every donation i've received i i make a new a new resource um a new free resource a, a, another one that doesn't have cost um for students and that's been a little bit of a motivation for me and the people who are donating some of them are like my adult amateur students who who have been wanting to support the next generation of learners that's been really sweet I have a lot of band directors make donations when they're using my resources to help better their flute section. Um, so that's been really nice. And um, a couple of people who have attended my concerts and if I give a recital, I usually talk about the things that, that drive my passion. So it's been something where they probably aren't yet seeing the impact that their little, that, you know, their donation made, but like, I do when I when I read the comment of somebody saying thank you so much this was so fun or this helped or um, whatever it might be and I I I want to make sure that the people who do make those donations know that that there are usually kids there are kids who are um, reading and watching and and practicing whatever it is that that their donation helps create. That's awesome. Um, so outside of flute, you have also um, become certified to teach yoga, and you also uh, work in the De Bono method, um, which I believe is kind of a just a different way of thinking and kind of putting things into different boxes, if I understand correctly. But maybe you can talk more about how you use those two things from outside of flute teaching to also incorporate with your teaching. I think of yoga outside of the music practice room as a way of kind of mentally and physically 
recentering, blowing off steam, being a musician, being a small business owner can be very stressful. Um, so yoga, yoga is for me very powerful when not applied to music or my um, teaching life. Yet at the same time, um, yoga informs me as a performer and a teacher, it affects the way that I breathe and teach breathing. Um, I can play some really long phrases and I know that the way that I've approached breathing through yoga has helped with that. Um, it's helped me be aware of my posture and it's helped me be aware of my students' posture to try to avoid repetitive strain injuries and, and things along those lines, neck issues and shoulder tension. Um, and I'll use some of that yoga training, I guess, for a student who's preparing for an audition or a competition to try to calm or center. Um, when I'm playing flute though, like if I'm on stage, I'm not probably thinking about yoga too much, but the what I developed deeper from practicing yoga, I, I'm quite confident is probably helping me be more grounded on stage, even if I'm not thinking of it at the moment. Yeah. And completely different than that is, but related, I guess, um, De Bono methods I've been certified in for 10 or 12 years um, for, for a while. And most of my use of that has been with corporations and um, kind of training, training with businesses. Um, De Bono methods, have a couple of aspects, one of which is um, helping with decision making, helping organize thinking patterns, um, helping be more constructive and creative and, and things along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but it does come into my teaching because studying through Dr. De Bono's writings, especially the way the mind works and the, the way the mind works in learning, has influenced the way that I teach and, and, and reinforced my like of breaking down um, the way that we learn into more, ma more manageable chunks and recreating, I guess, patterns in our own behaviors. And um, pattern forming becomes a habit. Habits can be good or bad. Um, so it's helped me kind of view that from a slightly more scientific standpoint. And then it's helped me as a business owner because some of the decisions I have to make when it comes to how I spend the money um, that I make in my business or what I'm going to do next or, you know, having the ability to look at those from other, um, from this other lens outside of just being a creative music type has, I think, helped me stay a little bit more solid and grounded in also being a business owner. Um, so final question for you, if you were to maybe look back in time or talking to someone who's just getting started, what kind of advice would you give to yourself uh, when you first started, if you were looking back now, um, or to, you know, young students who are just getting started in teaching, what, what best advice could you give them before going out and doing this professionally? I would say, first of all, I I want to say that I love what I do and I find it very rewarding and there's lots of careers that we can have in music. Um, but I would probably wanna ask myself again or suggest to myself to spend some time really thinking about what my values are before I choose a career path. Um, like, is money an important value to me? Because, you know, I make comfortable money, but like I probably work more hours than most of my friends who make more money than me, right? Um, is, is time with friends an important value to me? Um, because preparing for an audition or preparing for a recital, I give up my nights and my weekends and I don't see very many people. Um, um, is where I live important? Is that a big value? Can I move, like, am I okay moving across the country for a job? Do I want to be close to my family? Do I want to be close to a spouse or a partner or whatever it might be? Um, and then there's that, how much do you value that relationship? Are you willing to be patient for the 15 or 30 or infinite number of relationships until you find that partner who's willing to listen to you play Tafna Logo Bear every single day? um without slamming the door or whatever it might be so i guess am i willing to make 
these sacrifices. So um, for me, at the end of the day, like I'm glad of every choice that I've made, but I've had to re re accept re do these values frequently. Some more fun things that I'd probably tell myself is listen to my teachers more um, and don't talk back to conductors, <laughs> um, especially that younger self that had that ego, you know, like there's good thing about confidence, but, you know, ego doesn't really serve very well, especially for young musicians where when you have the orchestra director tell you to play with less vibrato or more vibrato, you just say like, okay, I'll give it a good try, you know, like, yeah to listen to those and <laughs> I would also tell my younger self to practice with a tuner more because intonation was a big issue for most of my <laughs> youth <laughs> by youth I mean it's still an issue um but hopefully less of <laughs> a less distracting one um yeah and I guess young musicians too who aren't my younger self like in addition to those things um don't feel the need to rush the process um and some of those processes are like if you're not sure if you're ready to go to school then take lessons for a year you know um and work a job so you can take lessons we can we can all of us practice valuing amateur musicians more and what they contribute to the music community mm -hmm. um so, so for me as a teacher most of my students aren't going to become full-time musicians but what i'm really hoping to do is inspire my students to be lifelong participants in music right um, and i think the bottom line for being a lifelong participant whether you make it your career or not is just to remember why you enjoy it um, and that you do enjoy it and if it ever begins to be something that you don't enjoy then you know step back until you enjoy it again awesome yeah it all comes back down to um, kind of having those grounded values that you reevaluate consistently, which I think is really important to do. I didn't think about values when I was a high school student thinking about going into music school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Part of the reason I went into music is because my parents told me I couldn't. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a rebellious thing. And, and I know that that I wasn't alone in being a young person who was making a decision that wasn't, you know, complete for me. And, and so yeah sitting down for those values for a moment i think is, is is really powerful and young people's ability to perceive their own values is is really quite powerful i you know i, I see my students displaying their values frequently and uh, as teachers and adults and mentors it's really important that we actually acknowledge that what they are displaying or communicating as their values is is, is pretty important as well so yeah I guess my my hope is that teachers will start listening, asking students what their values are, rather than are you good enough or not good enough. Yeah, because um, we can all practice, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but do you have the value to practice, kind of a thing. So, See yeah, I start every lesson asking a student what their goals are, and some kids are just like, I had a bad day, I just want to have fun today, you know. And I might also say like, Hey, could we could we play that video game music, but you know, would it be cool if we also have a goal of like playing a couple of scales first type yeah. of a thing? And almost always like, yeah, sure, that's fine, kind of a thing. And then we can direct, we can direct, but not, not with, without also understanding what the the learner's goals are too. So, awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing this for us and with us. Um, please check out practiceflute.com and check out Matthew's videos on YouTube. They're a great resource. Also, the resources on his website are fantastic. And if you enjoy what you see or, you know, please donate to his, his website so we can continue making uh, lots of free resources for everyone. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun to talk with you. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to learn more about our guests, there's more information below. If you're a teacher, make sure to sign up for Club FCNY to unlock free shipping, extended trials, and commission for teachers, as well as other exclusive benefits for you and your students. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe.